Michael Cador is a community leader with more than three decades of experience in education, public safety, civic and community engagement, and mentoring. As founder and president of Magnus Solutions Incorporated, his company provides consulting, life skills, coaching, community service opportunities, business workshops, and inspirational speeches. Being a Brevard County native, he has always strived to serve his hometown community, so much so that he was recognized as the Central Florida Humanitarian of the Year in 2014. Cador's love for helping his community started early. As a youth, he volunteered at the Titusville YMCA with his family and in high school would participate in ride-alongs with his father, who served as an auxiliary policeman for 27 years. Cador was blessed with strong and inspirational parents who made him the honorable public servant he is today. He is humbled and grateful to have received the Dr. Harvey L. Riley Bridge Builder Award in 2017, the 2018 Space Coast Community Leadership Award, and the 2018 Ronald McNair Hidden Figures Award for his community impact. Prior to becoming a law enforcement officer, Mr. Cador earned national recognition at Eastern Kentucky University as a record-setting kick returner. In 1989, he was drafted into the NFL by the New Orleans Saints and later finished his professional football career in Montreal, Canada for the Montreal Machine. In 2014, he was inducted into the Space Coast Sports Hall of Fame. Cador holds a master's degree in management and leadership a Bachelor of Science degree in Corrections and Administration of Justice, and is currently a Doctoral of Education student at Capella University. He is currently the Associate Provost for Eastern Florida State College. Upon retiring from the Rockledge Police Department, he now serves his community as Rockledge City Councilman, seat number one. Cador has always kept faith and family first and lives by the motto, if you don't serve your community now, don't expect your community to serve you later. His wife of 27 years, Cornelia Cador, has always been his biggest supporter, encouraging and helping his community projects. The Cadors have instilled in their own children the importance of giving back. Michael Cador is a true and faithful servant of his community and a Central Florida humanitarian. Well, good morning. Once again, my name is Michael Cador, and it's truly an honor to be with you here today. I'd like to send out some thank yous just before I get started. I'd like to thank Tara Gibson for the, the invite to be a part of this Black History program. Thank you to Ansel Robinson, who is the uh, student life coordinator on the Palm Bay campus. Thank you so much. Huge shout out to my supervisor, Dr. Deidre Sibley, who is the campus provost here on the Cocoa campus. I would like to say thank you to the production team of WEFS, TV here on the Coco campus as well. As we go through this presentation, I hope that you provide some feedback and some questions so we can have some dialogue to give thanks to our Black History program. Can we go to the first slide? The Black family here pictured is my beautiful family. My beautiful queen sitting there in the middle, Cornelia Cador. Alongside of her is my son, Michael Cador. My beautiful princess, Courtney. And sitting next to me is Princess Sierra. Black family and to my family, thank you so much for always being so supportive. There are times when I would say, if I knew then what I know now, I would be further along. But as I reflect now, I say I'm so thankful for those individuals back then that paved the way even when I didn't understand. As I showed there, my beautiful family, where you're talking about faith, family and friends, we're going to talk about relationship goals. Because back then when I was growing up, I was just being obedient to my parents, elders and community leaders. What I did know was that they were shaping my future. The relationship goals that we're talking about is just not about my family, but pioneers, heroes and mentors that allowed not just me, but each of us to succeed through educating, encouraging and empowering us. Next slide. I'd like to start with our Titusville campus, for example, Dr. Frank Williams Learning Center. Dr. Williams returned to work as a supervisor of special projects for the Brevard County School Board. Dr. Williams also served as a federal desegregation specialist for the school board. 
But here's the interesting thing about Dr. Williams. He was always finding time to serve his community. Here I am pictured as a young teen being recognized by Dr. Williams for being up and coming student athlete in a community servant. Relationship goals. Regardless of a busy life, you must have that balance by finding time to pour into the lives of others. Next slide. James Weldon Johnson was a composer, author, educator, lawyer, diplomat, songwriter, and civil rights activist. Born in 1871, he was from Jacksonville, Florida, and at the age of 16, enrolled at Clark Atlanta University in HBCU, where he graduated in 1894. In 1899, he achieved his first literary success by writing the poem, Lift Every Voice and Sing, which unofficially became known as the Negro National Anthem. Now, the beautiful thing about this is when I attended college at Eastern Kentucky University on a football scholarship, I pledged Phi Beta Sigma Fraternity Incorporated because of its motto, culture for service and service for humanity. My fraternity brothers, along with all the black Greek fraternities and sororities, are family and have a sense of serving the community. Relationship goals. As I attended college in Kentucky, my beautiful queen, girlfriend then, attended formerly Brevard Community College now as Eastern Florida State College. And then she went on to finish her college in Jacksonville. She not only encouraged me through the pledge process, but she also inspired me to work hard athletically and academically. Relationship goals. How do we make it through a long distance relationship? Well, communication. We both received three letters a week until graduating from college. There was no internet, there was no social media, only phone calls on Sunday. There was a commitment, confidence, and trust. We wanted to be together, but wanted a future, so we encouraged each other to finish. Quitting was not an option in school or with each other. As we fast forward, fast forward to a wonderful marriage, the relationship marital goal is God first, that we are one, and once again, quitting is not an option. Thank you to my beautiful queen. The continued blessing that many years later my queen pledged Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated, followed by our youngest daughter, Suera, who graduated from the University of Central Florida, she would become legacy of this amazing sorority. But as a family, our son Michael, who went off to college and also served as the military reserves as a civil affairs specialist, and Princess Courtney, a cheerleader from Little League High School College and is currently employed with the Baltimore Ravens and also as an educator up in Maryland. Phi Beta Sigma Fraternity Incorporated and Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated is the only constitutionally bound brother and sister organization of all black Greeks. However, please know that your family can be blood or by relationship, but the importance is to continually show love, work together in unity, and realizing that quitting is not an option. You see, Mr. Johnson, my fraternity brother, was best remembered as the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, NAACP, who was an amazing leader who fought relentlessly for the rights of his people. The song, Lift Every Voice and Sing, recognized the fact that African Americans had come a long way on a very tough road and that they needed to work together to overcome the struggles that they faced. I love that verse. Facing the rising sun, our new day begun. Let us march on till victory is won. Those who are on this presentation, I encourage you young people, educators and staff, to give thanks to our seniors and those who have helped us along the way, realizing that no one is perfect, we all may get off course, but have a mentor who is also an accountability partner to get you back on course. The black family, relationship goals. Remember, set goals, work hard, and finish them. I'm so thankful for the work that Mr. James Weldon Johnson, you know, he also had a queen. Her name was Grace. I love that name, Grace. In Latin, it stands for favor or blessing. And just as my queen Cornelia 
in American, it stands for strong willed or being wise. I'm so blessed to have a strong supportive partner such as my wife. Once again, relationship goals. John, next slide, please. The Cocoa Campus, George Washington Carver, an African-American scientist and educator, born in 1864, went on to become one of the most prominent scientists and inventors of his time. Mr. Carter devised over 100 products using the peanut. Once again, my fraternity brother, Dr. George Washington Carver, dedicated his life to research at Tuskegee University. He could have added fortune to fame, but caring for neither, he found happiness and honor in helping people in this world. Relationship goals. There's no need to strive for fame and fortune and to not have happiness, honor, and being able to serve with humility. Here at Eastern Florida State College, where our mission is led by our awesome president, Dr. James Rissey, is to engage our diverse population in quality accessible learning opportunities. We're considered one of the best state institutions here in the state of Florida. While we're educating, we're encouraging and we're empowering. Looking at the buildings to the left, to the right, you can see Carver Junior College on the Cocoa campus. It was established here in Brevard County by the Board of Public Instruction back in 1960 to serve black students at that time. And at that same time, it founded Brevard Junior College, which is now Eastern Florida State College for white students. It was founded as a result of a 1957 decision by the Florida legislature to preserve racial, racial segregation in education, mandated under the 1885 constitution that was in effect until 1968. The legislature wanted to show in response to the unanimous Supreme Court decision mandating school integration, Brown versus Board of Education. In 1963, citing inadequate enrollment, the Board of Public Instruction made the decision to close the college by merging it with Brevard Community College, hence Eastern Florida State College. The Carver site operated as a branch of the Brevard Community College for the 1963-64 academic year. So existing students could complete the programs that they had started. And after 1964, no college classes were held at the Carver site and the facilities were turned over to Monroe High School in Cocoa. In the 1990s, Brevard Community College named a new building there in the middle, George Washington Carver Administrative Center. This rich history we pass every single day here on this campus. I currently proudly serve as the associate provost on the Cocoa campus under the leadership of Dr. Sibley. Can you imagine the struggles and the pressures that Dr. Carver had went through? I'm just so honored and appreciative of his perseverance. He did never marry, but he did date. His relationship goals, he was big on relationships as he established a friendship and a research partnership with the scientists. Dr. Carver was well respected, not only in the black community, but the white community as well. All of which is in line with our national theme, the black family, representation, identity, and diversity. When he passed away on his grave was written, he could have added fortune to fame, but caring for neither, he found happiness and honor in being helpful to the world. John, next slide, please. We move further south to the Melbourne campus. Relationship goals, mentorship. On the Melbourne campus, I served as an adjunct instructor and the coordinator for the Public Safety Institute. Here I was able to make a huge impact in the training of our future public safety officers. However, at the age of 12, I met Dr. Jolie Smith while sitting in the bank lobby with my father before going to football practice. Out of obedience and respect, when Dr. Smith approached me, I stood, because if I wouldn't have, my dad would have knocked me out. Dr. Smith looked me in my eyes, he shook my hand firmly, and he told me that I would go on to do great things. Being obedient 
be obedient to your father, follow your father's lead, work hard, and stay out of trouble, young man. You know, as a 12-year-old, I looked at him, and all I really was thinking at that time was, I wish this man would hurry up and daddy can take me to football practice. But see, you fast forward. I would have never thought he would be such a great mentor, not only for me, but for many. John, can you share this video? Yo, I would like to bring my mentor here on this camera and just say, Dr. Joe Lee, uh, thank you so much for all of your mentor, your life examples, setting the path, not only for me, but for so many other people. And I just want to say thank you so much for being my mentor um, over all these years of my life. Well, let me say, uh, Councilman and Associate Provost Cador, <laughs> it's been an honor working with you all these years. In fact, I can switch that thing around. I've learned so much from you. I think you're my <laughs> mentor. And um, throughout the community in this county, I've heard nothing but the most positive comments about what you are doing with your work in this community, this county, at the college, and with the city of Rockledge. Once again, congratulations. I hear students at the college, faculty members, administrators, praising the work that you're doing. Keep up the good work. Doctor, I'll definitely try to keep up the good work, and thank you so much. I yes, appreciate sir. you, and I love you, sir. It's my All pleasure. Right. All right. Take care. Dr. Jolie Smith, thank you so much for not only mentoring me, but so many individuals. Ask yourself right now, do you have a mentor? Are they holding you accountable? Are you mentoring someone else? John, let's go to the next slide. As I prepare to close the Palm Bay campus further south, General Titus Hall, sticking with the theme, relationship goals, but giving back by serving others. Commander Titus Hall was the first African-American two-star general to lead the base at the Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. The Major General served in Vietnam, logging 4,000 hours of flying in his career. Prior to his appointment, Hall served as the Chief Avionics Engineer on the B-1 Bomber Program at the Aeronautical Systems Division. General Hall served in the Air Force for 30 years. I could take a brief moment just to say thank you to everyone who is serving or have served in our military. After his retirement, he became a vice president at Brevard Community College, now Eastern Florida State College. The general helped to establish the campus in Palm Bay. Once again, those relationship goals, he was retired, but still giving back. From 2016 to 2019, I proudly served as the associate provost on the Palm Bay campus. My office was located in this amazing building named after General Hall. Major General Titus Hall passed away in 2013 and a memorial service was held at the General Titus Hall building. I was honored to serve in that memorial. As you can see pictured there in the middle, I was with some high school students who served the colors. John, next slide please. Relationship goals. Serve others by giving back to your community. And giving back to your community with humility, honor, and integrity. Picture here was an honor to give back to uh, school events with General Titus, reading to our youth. Yes, I served because my parents served. Yes, I served because my mentors told me of the importance, and my family did as well. It doesn't go without saying, that as you serve, you will be blessed. But the blessings and the rewards from serving are huge. You are positively changing lives. Next slide, please, John. You see, everybody can be great because everybody can serve. Here pictured in the center of this presentation, you see Dr. Sibley. Standing next to her is one of our board of trustees Mr. Moses Harvin Sr. Mr. Moses Harvin Sr., not only a good mentor of mine along with Dr. Sibley, Mr. Moses Harvin Sr. is also a member of Phi Beta Sigma Fraternity Incorporated. Up there to the right, working with our youth, educate, encourage, and empower. 
these young men were very blessed and not only teaching me <laughs> about giving back and its importance, where they're learning how to tie a tie. If you have an opportunity to ever go to the King Center, they're standing in the lower right, with my wife and I in the middle of us, is Dr. Maxwell King. He also served as a college president. He was at one point the youngest president ever of a college at the age of 32. And the other slide there is me just serving on my campus, being able to encourage some of our individuals who are in our cosmetology program here at Eastern Florida State College. John, next slide, please. Lastly, if you don't serve your community now, don't expect your community to serve you later. Being very fortunate and blessed to volunteer with the Infinite Scholars Program where the possibilities are infinite. Over the last five years, that program has given over $20 million to students to attend college. Aging Matters in Brevard, where we assist our seniors. Brevard Public Schools, who has a huge partnership with our students here through dual enrollment and some of our technical programs as well. The far slide there is about I Got Skills Football Clinic. Very fortunate and blessed for over 20 years being able to teach fundamental skills to youth about football. Next slide, John, please. There you see our awesome president, Dr. Ritchie, and standing to his side is Dr. Sibley after one of our graduations. And with that, I say thank you. I also like to go in and just mention to you that if you haven't already, make sure you're putting some questions in the chat box. I would love to hear from you. Thank you for giving of your time, but also realize here at Eastern Florida State College, it's about being able to come to college with little expenses. Here at Eastern Florida State College, we have the foundation. And Mr. Ansel Robinson said, added that information in our chat box. And just like General Hall, who gave to the Cador Family Foundation, my family started the Cador Family Scholarship. The foundation concentrates on cultivating donor and alumni relationships. This scholarship was an amazing opportunity for us to be able to give back. So if you see in the chat room, please go in there, find out about these scholarships. You have the ability to apply just for one scholarship, but be eligible for many. Just be prepared to write that 300 minimum essay. Take advantage of that. And not only if you're serving in your community and you would like to start a scholarship, please reach out to the foundation. They'll be able to provide you more information by contacting them on starting a scholarship. But we're so thrilled that my family came together and started the Cador Family Minority Scholarship. Those scholarships were open up in March for our fall semester. So at this time, and as I prepare to close, I'd like to close by saying thank you so much. Remember those relationships goals. Hopefully you pulled something from this presentation. It's a truly an honor to serve. It's truly an honor to be here at Eastern Florida State College. And at this time, I'll turn it over to Ansel Robinson so we can have some questions for my chat room. Ansel? Great question. Here, at, because uh, Eastern Florida State College, we do have bachelor's degrees, but primarily a large amount of our associate degrees and associate of sciences degrees, we have clubs. And being a part of these clubs, the beautiful thing about that, you can start a club, regardless of the title, uh, whether we have our, our chess club or our gaming club or any of those events that you can think of, you can start those here at Eastern Florida State College. The concept of the fraternity and the sorority is about a brotherhood. Though we don't have those here at Eastern Florida State College just yet, we do have some amazing clubs on every campus that you can take advantage of. Thank you. That was a great question. Any other feedback or comments or questions, Mr. Robinson? Yeah. What advice can you give about how to build relationships on campus? Oh, building relationships on campus. The first thing is your advisor is your main key. And when you meet that advisor and they're working with you on your class schedule, get with them to find out about activities on campus. 
and that can shift you to our amazing student life coordinators. Every campus has one. Reaching out to them, they can tell you how to get engaged. Mr. Robinson can definitely utilize some help in either making you a member of the Student Government Association or becoming an ambassador. But while you're on campus, touch base with your associate provost. You see, my job is an ambassador for the students. So any questions or concerns that you may have academically, your faculty, the staff here, touch base with your associate provost and we'll be able to assist you in any way that we can. What else do we have, Mr. Robinson? Anything else? Yes, yes, sir. How did you end up in law enforcement? Did family, faith, help you in that career? Well, one of the amazing things, and that, that brings us back not only just to the back, black family, but all families. My father was a auxiliary policeman for the Tidesville Police Department. So in watching him, I wanted to be able to serve. My oldest brother was in probation and parole. So I had a natural gravitation of wanting to be able to give back in law enforcement. So after I studied in corrections and law enforcement in college, in the off season of playing football in Canada, I was very fortunate and blessed to work at the Brevard County Sheriff's Office as a correctional officer. So getting into corrections, it was a first for my parents and being able to watch it, but then having those to say, hey, I want to be able to give back. But that was an amazing opportunity that Eastern Florida State College gave me. It's where I became certified as a correctional officer. I became certified as a police officer and being able to give back to my community. Great question. Do we have another one, Mr. Ansel? <laughs> yes, sir. For those that are looking for a mentor, what are the steps to find one? Wow, amazing question. I'm not sure if that's coming from a student and from an adult, but it doesn't matter. Being, the steps of being able to find one is being able to reach out. But you have to ask yourself, in what capacity are you wanting that mentor? Do you want one that's going to be from faculty and or staff, someone within your community? or someone that may be a part of a civic organization. Either way, you can have more than just one mentor, but know why do you want that mentor. So whatever capacity that you may be serving in, look around. Find somebody that you, know, you look like, you want to be with because of their job, because of their title, because of their role, and then reach out to them. They may have the ability to be able to spend some time with you daily through social media or in person. But once you find that mentor, please make sure you have one that's going to communicate with you, give you that correction action if, if needed, but someone that's going to hold you accountable. But this is what I would charge you once you find that mentor. Place yourself in a position to be a mentor as well. Great question, and thank you so much. Do we have another one, Mr. Robinson? How do you deal with families who don't have the same principles as you do? Wow, that's a great question. But to, to give a good response to that, understanding that I mentioned earlier, your family may be blood, your family may be come from relationships. So once again, wherever you may be out, seek individuals who can help you achieve your goals. Those that not only will hold you accountable, but making sure that they're going to educate you and encourage you and empower you. Yes, I was very fortunate and blessed to be able to have a family, but the nucleus of my inner circle doesn't just come from my parents or from my children or other peers. They come from people here at Eastern Florida State College that work with me daily. And the same way that they work with me, I try to give back by working with them as well. Thank you, Ansel. Great question. Do we have another one? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. How do you balance your work and family life? Wow, balance. Now, here's, here's the thing. You got to listen up real close, see? Go to bed early, very early. I get up early. But the secret to that and that balance is having some individuals in your inner circle to let you know when you get off balance. And that can come from friends and family members who are going to be very true to you when you get off course. One of the other successes to that balance is I take naps, 15 minutes. They used to tease me in college 
Some of them even tease me still to this day about me being able to take a 15 to 17 minute nap. You may ask yourself, what in the world can you do in 15 to 17 minutes? I can't take a nap in that time frame, but you can prepare for your day. You can get all your duties and tasks lined up of what you should be able to accomplish. You can work out on that time frame. So right now, I even uh, encourage you, go to bed 15 minutes earlier, wake up 15 minutes earlier, prepare your day, and find out what you need to be able to get done. Thank you for that, that question, man, so appreciate it. All right. And you are so involved. How do you manage your time? Well, time management. It's amazing when you look at your schedule and how you'll be able to balance. And then once again, it's a to-do list and a checklist. And these are some principles that I would like to share that I'll be talking about at another event a little bit later about being able to prepare yourself. Find out what it is that you have to do. And if it's not a top priority, you move that to the side. That's once again that balance that I truly enjoy. Everything that I do is lined together. Serving my community, serving here at the college, being there with my family. And when I'm out in the community representing, nine times out of 10, my family is with me. So as you're preparing yourself and prioritizing what's important, what you need to do, remember to be patient. Take away some of those things that you don't need to have involved there in your life at that time. But see, there's also a sense of pride when you're talking about balance. Having the ability to be able to say no, but have others around you to be able to tell you whether you should or you shouldn't. If it doesn't line up with me being able to give back and support the youth and the seniors within my community, either through educating them or encouraging them, I say no. But when everything is within that circle, it makes it easier to have that sense of pride of representing not only my family, my community, uh, this great institution, Eastern Florida State College. But each time you do that, the balance is important in understanding the time management and being able to maintain that sense of professionalism. Not only that professionalism in some of the appearance of what you may wear, but in the words that you speak. See, when you speak positively and you're encouraging someone else, they're gonna give that back to you. And they're gonna honestly be able to tell you when you need to slow down or speed up, say yes or say no. But the final thing that I'd like to share with that in that balance, which I think is so important, when many people may say, hey, how in the world can you do all of these things? Those individuals who are on their grind and that are doing a lot, they're not slowing down to say, hey, how do you handle and do all these different things? They're coming along and being able to say, how can I help? What do you need done? And with that, you give them praise. Thank those who have helped you along the way. Just prior to being able to come on and do this presentation, I'd like to thank again this amazing uh, EFSC studio production, production team. They were the ones that be able to make it, make it possible. So anytime you see someone who may seem like they're doing a lot, watch closely. There's so many other individuals that are helping them to be able to succeed because they're doing the same thing as well. Wonderful question, Antel. Thank you so much. What advice would you give your younger self to prepare for a lifelong marriage? Wow. Okay. Well, when I was about 13 years old, <laughs> my beautiful queen now would be married 30 years here in July, I just ran up on her and told her, you're going to be my wife one day. She's probably going to get on me for even mentioning that. But the younger self that I will tell then and to others now is, I wasn't prepared. I was just speaking it out. But this would be the advice. Don't quit. Find out what it is that you like about that person. Be able to set your goals. Communication is so important. The blessings of my wife and I being able to make it for so many years, we had the same mindset. We wanted to be able to be together. We set goals. And when you have a lack of communication, sometimes you don't know what the other person is thinking if you don't ask. But there's a sense of respect that comes with that. I would never speak ill to my wife or of my wife or girlfriend or friend. So you want to be respectful to those who you're around, especially if you want to be able to receive that back. Some of those other tips will be, what is your attitude and your mindset? And are you being aware of what's going on? You see, my family knows when I may be moving a little fast or 
I may be having a good day or a bad day. But that positive communication and respect, it allows them to be able to come and share that with me. And lastly, just that sense of patience and professionalism and pride to be able to say, hey, I love my family. I love Eastern Florida State College. And because we are a huge family here, when you are right, you give that praise. When you may be a little bit off, make sure that you have someone in your circle that's going to be honest with you to give you the information that you can move on. Remembering no one is perfect. <laughs> we, all, we all go through, we all have those days, but it's so important to be able to realize a family mindset. Thank you so much. That was a wonderful question, that's it. What is something you wish people knew about your family? Well, hmm. Well, the thing about our family is not just some of the successes that we may be able to share, but the ability to be able to make it through the storms and the tough times. You see, outside of my uh, Princess Sierra being able to uh, play soccer um, competitively and in high school, and even for a short period here at Eastern Florida State College before she went on to uh, the University of Central Florida, there were some injuries that were sustained. With Princess Courtney, things that we go through, highs and lows and being away from home, even with my son, the challenges of the good, the bad, and the ugly. What I would like to share for them to be able to know is that every day we pray together. And even when we was departing from each other, my beautiful queen with technology allows us to FaceTime, being able to have family meetings. Some people may think it's funny or even corny, if you will, but as a family, we stick together. Find yourself that inner circle. That's what I want them to know about our family, not the successes, but how do you overcome when those storms come in life? Faith, family, friends, prayer, and knowing that you're going to be able to get through it together. Thank you, Ansel. A wonderful question. All right. If you have to create a slogan for your family, what would it be? Mm. Well, it depends on the day. And especially many slogans will come from my wife. At many times she would ask me, um, what is my why? <laughs> you actually say, why would your wife do that? Because many times she would ask me, honey, why do you constantly leave your clothes on the floor? Why don't you pick up after yourself? Why haven't you taken the trash out? <laughs> but I say that to be able to say this. The family slogan is, if you don't serve your community now, don't expect your community to be able to serve you later. That's created that balance. That's created that belief. That's created that encouragement to be able to share with others. And being with the mindset that if spiritually, whoever you may serve or whomever your, what your belief may be in, is to have faith. So that would be the motto of the Kador family. Faith, serving your community. Hopefully that helps or answers the question. Can you share a memory of serving your community, change the lives of those you serve, and how it changed your life? Hmm. You know, I, I, can, I can recall at a very young age, um, third, fourth grade, where my father came to a uh, presentation at school, and my dad was in his police uniform. And just in that moment, it wasn't even the message that my father delivered. It was him being in a position in a uniform and how all the other students were just so uh, thrilled to see someone serving in that capacity. That made me gravitate towards that. So that's why it's important that anytime you see our men and women who are protecting and serving, you tell them thank you. Anytime we can promote positive images of individuals in the community, we need to do that because sometimes here in society, we see so many negative things that it's difficult. But that aspect not only changed my life of wanting to get into law enforcement, it was in that same aspect athletically. And I can recall the times of being able to want to play football, but I couldn't because of my size, because of I had asthma. But the encouraging words that came from my mom that told me, we're not going to claim that asthma over your life. The encouraging words from my dad 
when dad, these guys are big and, you know, sometimes those hits hurt. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but the power of sound mind and of love. So with that, that shifted and changed my mind that I knew tough times were going to come academically and athletically. But if I surrounded myself with a good team that encouraged me and being able to allow me to take my skill set to the next level, I would be able to succeed. That's why I give back into the community. Even starting a football clinic that went over 20 some odd years before COVID came into place. I would start off with five or six kids and they would say it would never work. But when your purpose isn't about you, your purpose is about giving back. 20 years later, we're now seeing individuals who've gone on to serve their military, going off to college, graduated from college that are doctors and attorneys and are lawyers. And even by chance, here in Brevard County, sent several individuals to the National Football League, one of which who was playing this Sunday for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So hopefully that answered that question. And thank you so much for asking that answer. Great questions, too. Are, are there any upcoming projects you are working on for 2021? Hmm. Well, I wouldn't call it a project, but it's been a lifelong goal. And in a few weeks, I'll be very fortunate and blessed after uh, three years of studying, uh, finishing my doctoral degree. So that would be the biggest project. That would be the biggest focus. And once again, thank you to my family for supporting me and guiding me on that. I'm in that last... Um, stretch of finishing my doctorate degree. But here at Eastern Florida State College, my, my nine to five, the bread and butter, it's a male minority initiative. That's the project that we uh, continue to be able to work on. Outside of Eastern Florida State College with the male minority initiative and you know, just striving to be the best uh, associate provost for our students that I can be and finishing my doctorate degree within the community, it's about being able to provide uh, these scholarships so our young men and women can go to college and finish college once they enter into college. So, in a nutshell, each one of those are a balance of being able to not only serve, but educate, encourage, and empower others. Great question. What is your favorite family tradition? Wow. Well, family tradition. Our family, uh, we celebrate birthdays hugely. I'm talking, sit in the chair early in the morning, giving out the gifts. That's one of the huge family traditions just within the Cador family. One of the other traditions that, is, um, that we do is during Christmas time, we work with Aging Matters and our family, we go out and we give gifts to the seniors. And the beauty behind that is, is when you go out and you're serving your seniors and you're seeing individuals who are 70, 80, and they're living alone, the smiles on their faces when someone comes in and says Merry Christmas to them is huge. That same transition from when my parents were serving and taking us along, that's what we're doing with our family right now. Celebrating those birthdays. And even when you're not there, thank goodness for technology, we're FaceTiming. The Christmas holiday, before we all get together, we go with Aging Matters and serve and give back to our community. Outside of church, which is a, <laughs> a fellowshipping event that we do regularly, those could be just two right off the top of my head of the traditions that we have uh, in the Cador family household. Some great questions, a lot of questions. All right, so that is all for the questions right now. Yes. Go, Dad. You're doing great. <laughs> Thank you for being a great mentor. Thank you. Uh, great history lesson for me, A.T. Cador. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. And I'd like to thank you, too, for this great presentation. Thank you. Mr. Robinson, thank you so much. You are um, actually a mentor of mine, an inspiration of mine. All the work that you're doing down in not only on the Palm Bay campus as a student life coordinator, you're changing lives as well with the student government. But you're very active down there, and I want to thank you for not only what you do there on the campus, but outside in the community as well. Starting with the top and final, if I can, 
once again, thank you to Dr. Ritchie and his vision for Eastern Florida State College and our Board of Trustees who allow us to be able to provide an education here in the Central, Central Brevard or Brevard County area. Giving huge thank yous to uh, Dr. Sibley, who is not only the campus provost, but an amazing attorney and a dear friend and a good mentor of mine. Thank you again to you, Tara, for inviting me and believing in me to be able to share a message, not just a message about black history, but also just a message to be able to encourage, but a history lesson all wrapped in into one. And each of you who are watching this video or this presentation, thank you for being on. Regardless of the number, regardless of the amount, I want you to be able to take away from this presentation the ability to be able to serve. If you need help, get help. Choose Eastern Florida State, Co Eastern Florida State College as your choice to not only come and finish, but to volunteer and give back. And if you have amazing ideas, don't sit on those ideas. Put them to work. Thank you so much.